Hey, hello everybody. It is Mary here and I am going live exclusively in the Aspiring Authors group. So the it's just you and I right now in here and I just wanted to take a moment to answer the questions that came in uh, yesterday. And so I'm going to figure out, just give me, bear with me one second. I am going to go in the group and answer the questions because Cheryl posted for a Q&A and we wanted to maybe talk about them on the Facebook Live that we did, but because it didn't really match up with the topic of podcasting, I thought I would just jump in here and talk to you guys privately. So, yeah, so we had a few questions come in post-workshop, so that's amazing. Let me just see what they are. So, so Serafina was talking about biting the bullet and um, investing in an editor. So Serafina, I'm going to take your question first. So the question about, she said specifically, I don't know if my question will get answered, but can you please help me throw caution to the wind, bite the bullet, and sign on the editor? So Serafina has gotten a quote from an editor, and, you know, editing can be, it's, it's not cheap but it's also not the end of the world either. So it's like, you know, depending on your budget, it can be a difficult decision to make. And I asked her a couple questions in the group, like on a scale of one to 10, and this is, this is kind of you, like as you're deciding how much you wanna invest in making your book happen, here's some good questions to ask yourself. So on a scale of one to 10, with 10 being the highest, how much do you want this to happen? And then no matter what that, no matter what that answer is, then you can say to yourself, why so high? And then just listen to the answers that came. So what she said when I said, why so high, is that she wants the best guide to put out her best work in this beautiful universe and she wants to win. She wants to get past her blocks. So I think that it's a beautiful thing. And one of the questions that I asked myself when I was choosing how much money I wanted to spend and in investing in myself and in the book was even if I spend X amount of dollars, a thousand, 20,000, 50,000, whatever that number is, at the end of the day, if I never get even $1 back, will I still be happy that I have a book to hold in my hand? And so nowadays when I think about like, because I, I have this book in my hand, Oh, look at that. My software is doing something back there. I have my book in my hand. And so I would ask myself, like, is it worth all that if I never make $1 back? And my answer was yes, because I knew that my children would always have this book. My grandchildren would have this book. This book is changing lives. Um, I get emails from people all over the world. I got an email from a woman in Cape Town, South, South Africa, you know, I, so anyway, hopefully that helps, um, Serafina. So let's see, Karen Kay had asked, I have another question whilst searching for the competitive while researching for the competitive analysis section. So most of the books are older and I'm not sure if I should include those or not. I know there is a market for my book. So that's a really great question because if you are not finding more current books, it, it, it does indicate that there's not a huge market, but on the other hand, it's good for there to be a niche. So Karen, my suggestion for you, my dear, is to go with the books that are the most relevant as well as the newest. So if there is a book that is in the genre and you know, can you expand the genre a little bit? So hopefully that helps. So if it's not exactly within a year old, I wouldn't worry about that. I think the most important thing is to show that your book is relevant. Um, also, Karen, if you are listening, um, I want to say you did an amazingly, amazingly beautiful job on your one sheet. 
It's so pretty. I love the colors. I love how your purple matches your shirt. You did a great job on just the look of it. It's very clean. Your logos that you put on there look really, really good. It's easy to read. And I just wanted to say kudos to your one sheet. It's really quite remarkable. Let's see, what else can we address? So if you're listening right now and you have a question, you can, of course, let me know. Um, so I posted about I posted about going on podcasts. And the reason that I wanted to do that is because I'm actually going to be hosting with Cheryl's help. Yes, Kim, it was beautiful. Um, I'm actually going to be hosting a free podcasting challenge. It's a free five-day challenge that um, anyone, I mean, literally anyone in the world that can participate in. And what it's going to be is a literally step-by-step -step, day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. I'm going to teach you how to book your first podcast. I'm going to, you know, no one was around to show me how to do this. When I first got started and I wanted to go on podcasts, I literally, I, I literally just told my assistant, like, we need to go on some podcasts. We had no idea how to do it. So I'm going to share with you all of the things in a five-day process so that you can start to book yourself on some shows. Now, I'll be honest. These are going to be relatively small shows that you're going to book yourself on, especially in the beginning, unless you've already been going on shows. But that's a good thing because the last thing you want to do is not be experienced and go on a podcast. Um, and blow it because if you blow it, you know, you might not get another chance, but <laughs> don't worry too much if you blow it because there, there was a show that at least one show that I completely blew it. And, and the nice thing is it was such a small show that nobody probably ever heard me on that show. So no biggie at all. Anyway, so I will be creating some links for the podcast challenge. We just wanted to announce it today. Um, Tech is not always my strong strong suit, so I will be getting you a link to be able to sign up for that soon. And you don't have to worry, you're not gonna miss anything because we will be starting it in February. So just give us a couple weeks to plan it. I'm also gonna create for you guys a workbook so that you have all of the steps and you can print them out. You don't have to worry about doing it on the same days that I'm presenting that you do it. It's really gonna be a very hands-off self-study. So um, it will be really enjoyable. Cheryl and I are going to do a w live webinar, but we only want to have 10 people on the webinar. So the 10 people that we're going to pick are just going to be the first 10 people who sign up for the um, content creation and marketing course. We already have five. So the next five people who sign up for that will automatically be in the webinar. But don't worry, because if you don't, if you don't make it into that group of 10, it's no big deal, because we'll send you the video for the webinar anyway. It's just that we want to keep the, the live participants down to 10 so that we can really manage that process. And then uh, let's see how it goes. It will be so fun, guys, to have you um, updating us with your progress. I mean, like, look, let this group be the place that you come to to brag. I think especially there's a lot of women in this group and we don't take time to brag. So a great daily practice is to have three things you're grateful for three things that you're proud of in a day and three things that you desire. And so like I'll share three gratitudes with you right now. Um, I'm really grateful that my talk at the Savoy Rotary Club went well. I was super nervous. I know Lola, um, Lola, if you're still watching, you had a talk today too at the Executive Club. How did that go? Tell me in the comments, please, because I am dying to know. Um, also, I am grateful for, oh, she's sending hearts. That must have meant that she rocked it out. I would have loved to have been there, but I was giving a talk um, at Savoy. So you'll have to message me and let me know how it went. So I'm grateful for all of you. I'm, I'm grateful for this podcast challenge because, you know, I'm really just doing this because I'm passionate about wanting people to experience what I've experienced in life. And anyone who knows me just knows that I'm passionate about pe teaching other people. And I'm also grateful that I get to have my it was so fun, and then she's proud of herself. I'm proud of your courage too, Lola. That's pretty awesome. And uh, yeah, so 
you know, here's another thing I'm going to be teaching you guys that I don't know where I'm going to put this yet, but it's just something that's coming. Like a lot of times I get these ideas and ever since I asked like spirit, my guides, whatever you believe, when I asked, like bring me ideas, that's my mantra. Like every single day I say, bring me ideas. And then what happens is I get so many millions of ideas. It can be a challenge to sort them all out. But one of the things that I want to do in this group is I want to teach you guys how to use each other as influencers to build your platform. So, um, you can, you know, what I, what I mean by that is you guys all might know by now that I do the Fearless Ambition um, weekly television trainings. I'm going to have Lola on for a training. It's like when you learn how to leverage your network of people who are doing similar things that you're doing, it's not competition. It's like you can use each other to build your networks. I just had this thought yesterday that I wanted to teach you guys this. And I kid you not that the next thing that happened to me was I went into a Facebook group and there was a woman who had posted that she was looking for speakers. And I I responded to the post and she messaged me and after she sort of like figured out who I was, she was like, yes, you're perfect. Guess what she wanted to do? She wanted to trade Facebook lives, which means I do a Facebook live with her on her page and then she does one with me on my page. It's a perfect win-win situation because it teaches it, it builds both of the networks, right? Because Facebook Live is really hot right now. And so, and by the way, I know this, nobody asked me this. This wasn't even part of the Q&A. So if you guys like, don't want me to talk about this. Hey, Serafina, I answered your question earlier. So whenever I'm done, go back to the beginning of the, of the, what do they call this broadcast? And I did answer your question, just so you know, because I thought it was an amazing question. Okay, dear. All right. So yeah, let's talk about, I want to teach this group, guys. This is the reason why I want to keep this group intimate and only for the people who are taking the courses, because I want to teach you guys how to do this. Like, right? So I can show you guys how to network with each other and build your platforms simultaneously. By the way, I'm seeing some big influencers do this in a big way. And so like I am simultaneously like learning from them the things that I'm doing to build my platform because I have some big goals. Like I think that it's more important to focus on the percentage of growth versus the um, numbers right? So you might have an email list that's a hundred people. You might have an email list that's five people. You might even only have your mother's email, but Hey, if you only have your mom's email today and tomorrow you have somebody else's email, that's a hundred percent growth. That's incredible. So focus on the percentage of your growth more than you focus on the number of likes. I know I was talking to Lola the other night and, um, I was, I was encouraging her to go live from her business page versus going on her personal page. And here's the thing, like, I know the challenge with that because when you go live on your personal page, or this is what I notice when I post something on my personal page, I'll get 50, 60 comments easy because Facebook is showing those posts to more people. However, that doesn't build your platform. Okay. So even though you're going to get less engagement in the beginning, from your public page, still do it on the public page. So especially if you're going to go live, because what you can do is you can go live on your public page, author page, fan page, whatever you call it. I think mine's just called public figure. Um, you can share it to your personal page right? So a lot of times you'll notice um, right now I'm just going live within our group because I don't want, um, I don't, this is just between you, you and me. Um, but a lot of times I go live from like Cheryl and I, we go live on my page and then we share it with inside this group. So anyway, that's just like a little thing to know. So <laughs> here's my book. It's so cute. I love it. You guys, I got to do um, a book talk Friday night, which was like amazing and life-changing and I, I really enjoyed it and appreciate having the book club that and they fed me so that's good so all right i'm not seeing any questions coming up so if you guys have any questions about the five day challenge i know you guys are going to ask stuff like how do we sign up when we're going to start blah 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 those are great questions and i can absolutely tell you that by monday if not sooner 
I will have the sign up link and then probably within a week of that I will have all the documents ready to go I want to do the challenge in February so that I have plenty of time to because you know here's another thing guys if you watch me do this five-day challenge I will share my numbers with you so I will tell you exactly how many I will tell you exactly how many signups I get um, that I'm going to be adding to the, I actually have a separate email list for the aspiring authors. So I will share with you exactly how many people are signing up um, with the five day challenge. Now I won't share that publicly, but I'll share that within the group because here's where I can tell you that will be that be valuable if I'm not getting like 20 30 40 people signing up every day then what you're gonna do is you're gonna see me recalibrate you're gonna see me step back and go okay I didn't get as many signups as I thought I was in the last 24 hours what can I tweak like what can I tweak what can I change you know what what do people need in order to sign up for this challenge that's the reason I'm doing this challenge absolutely free and um, number one, because I want to show people how to do it, because people are constantly asking me, like, how can I get on a show? Can you refer me to get on a show? You know, something like that. But on the other hand, this is a great lesson in how to build a platform. So just the other day, I was talking to a friend, and she um, she created her free opt-in, and she only got 50 signups. So, you know, it's a lot of work to create a free opt-in, and then you only get 50 signups. It's like, what's wrong? And what I told her was, the reason that you only got 50 signups is because the thing that you're giving away for free is, um, it's something people can get just online for free anyway. So you want your free opt-in to be something that is unique to you, right? So this podcast challenge, like I got to tell you, in my circles, um, nobody goes on as many podcasts as I am. Like podcast is something that I can talk to you about inside, outside, backwards and forwards. And um, I, I know exactly like the going up the it's kind of like podcasts are like climbing stairs you know you go on these small shows and then you go on a little bit of bigger shows and then you just keep you, you just keep it rolling all the time and so i um i've got that down like i can teach you guys that with my eyes closed and my hands tied behind my back which is good to like crack my back right now so all right and um okay so i'm not seeing any questions wait remind me the site that has the podcast all listed out. You're going to create your own list, Lola. <laughs> um, you're going to create your own list, but I'm going to be telling you where to go on the challenge. So the where you're going to start is, excuse me, I'm going to check into that power up podcasting thing, Serafina. So I've never heard of that before, but I will definitely be checking it out. All right. So let me go back to what Lola was saying. The great place to start when you're making your, your podcast list is you want to start with Blog Talk America, Voice America, and Transformation Talk Radio. And there are several others, which of course I will be providing, um, I will be providing to all of you. So then once you have exhausted, like, or once you've started to go on about 40 to 50 shows, then you're you're going to want to like up level the quality. You're gonna to wanna to start to go on higher quality shows. And what you'll do then is you'll make a list of influencers. So for me, the list of influencers are like Brene Brown, Gabby Bernstein, Malik, like, the influencers that you want to be like, okay, Christine Hassler is one for me, JJ Virgin. Um, you want to go for people who are in your industry, but that they're like, they're already uh, made it pretty big. And then you just go online and you Google, like I can Google Christine Hassler or Nancy Levin plus podcasts, and it will give me all the links to all the podcasts. So you guys could try this today. If you go on Google and you put in Mary Shore's S-H-O-R-E-S podcast, you will just see pages after pages after pages of the shows I've been on. And then you just write them all down. And like, I went on Positive Head, I went on Shameless Moms. So like, Lola, you would be awesome on Shameless Moms. Um, I went on Lose the Cape, which is another show for moms. There is an entire, an entire podcast genre of 
mompreneurs. Like that's a thing, okay? Mompreneurs is a thing. And so you could even take a, a thing, like a, a, a genre, mompreneur podcasts, female entrepreneur podcast. I would get all these top 10 lists, like top 10 podcasts for women. And I would just write them all down. And by the way, I got into the habit of pitching shows that were above my pay grade. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean by above pay grade? Like I, I, I pitched shows that I knew I was going to get rejected. All right. So it's like probably good at some point to talk about rejection because rejection is just part of the game. All right. It's just numbers. I know that if I pitch 60 shows, 20 of them are going to say yes. In the beginning, you send 60 emails, five say yes. It's a numbers game. So what you do is you decide how many shows you want to go on. If you want to go on five shows per month, per month, then that means you need to send 60 emails. It's as simple as that. Anyway, all right, I could talk all freaking day, and I don't want to do that because, um, to be honest, I'm tired. <laughs> All right. Love you guys. Massive, massive love to you all. Uh, we will be sending details. And again, if any of you want to be on the live webinar with Cheryl and I, the way we, we have five spots available for that. And all you have to do is sign up for the content creation and marketing course. And I suggest you do that within the next three days while you still get it at that upfront price of $79. So thank you all. I really appreciate all the love and support that I've gotten. And uh, I will, I'm sure, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Hey, this is Mary. Thanks so much for watching. Check out a free chapter of my book, Conscious Communications at maryshores.com forward slash free chapter. The link is in the description below.